Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of April. Let's get started. Surprise, surprise, bitch. February and March were shit shows, but fucking April, dude, came through with it. I read over 30 books. 30 fucking books. 30 books in 30 days. I am proof that dreams can come true. <laughs> if you asked me why I decided to read 30 books in 30 days, girl, I have no fucking idea. I wouldn't recommend doing it because it was a stressful experience trying to finish a book a day. Either way, this wrap up is going to be huge. I have so many books to talk about. A lot of them I liked, some of them I didn't like, and some of them I fucking loved. Let's do this. Let's just fucking do it. I'm going to start off with my five star prediction books. Because I've already made a video talking about these books and how I felt about them, I'm just going to quickly go over them. Those books were A Simple Plan by Scott Smith, Under the Skin by Michelle Faber, The Girl in Red by Christina Henry, and Uzo Maki by Junji Ito. I will link those videos up above and down below so you can go check it out in case you're curious what I really, what my heart said about those books. We have a lot to get through, so grab a snack, grab a drink, uh, pray if you need to, because <laughs> this is going to take a while. So technically, I did finish reading this book that I mentioned in my March wrap-up in April, so I'm counting it as one of the 30 ish books that I've read. That is The Collected Works of Gretchen Oyster by Carrie Fagan. This is a middle grade novel about a young boy whose brother is missing and or has run away. This was like lacking for me. I didn't get a lot out of it. I don't have that much to say about it because I didn't really feel anything from it. I had to read it for school. After that I finished reading The Blood of Elves by Andrzej Sapkowski. Sapkowski. This is the first book in the Witcher series. This is following a young girl who's like a princess and her family and like literally everyone in her little community is like murdered. She gets rescued by this dude, the Witcher, and he wants to teach her how to be a Witcher as well. And parts of this I really really enjoyed, especially the parts where the Witcher was there and like the little girl was there and everyone was sort of talking about like her potential and everything. That was super cool. I loved all of that. The other stuff like the politics to me was kind of boring. Overall I did really enjoy it. I would recommend that you pick it up. I'm very excited to pick up the second book. After that I finished In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This is a thriller novel about a party of people who go on this little trip to this like bachelorette except some crazy shit happens and maybe someone gets murdered. I, I enjoyed this. I thought it was okay. It wasn't as bad as The Woman in Cabin 10 but it wasn't as good as Turn of the Key. I get why people would be excited by it but for me personally I just thought it was okay. I also don't understand why people are like whoa this is like scary. <laughs> not scary like at all. Let's talk about The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is an adult thriller slash mystery novel. This is following a woman. She's, an, she's a book editor. She reads this book called The Magpie Murders but she realizes that she's missing the last 50 pages. Like she's missing the ending. And then she finds out that the author is dead. He was fucking murdered in his house. This editor, without really knowing that she's doing it, starts to unravel and solve his mystery. I was so into this. I don't know what it was. Something about the book just popped out at me and I was so invested that I could not stop reading it. This is a page turner and it really broke down the whodunit genre as a whole. It literally kept me guessing the entire time. I could go on and on and on about this book. It's so good. If you haven't read Magpie Murders, please check it out. I think it's totally worth the time, especially if you're into whodunits. Let's talk about The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 8. This is a manga series about a world where cursed people are deformed and the pure people are sort of human and they don't want to be touched by the cursed people. So they literally build a wall around their city and the people who are cursed live on the outside. 
that we're following um, one of the cursed and a human girl traveling together, trying to survive together and their trials and tribulations. It just keeps getting crazier and crazier and I love it so much. Up until now, I had completely forgotten that I participated in the Magical Readathon and I haven't been telling you what books I read for the Magical Readathon. We're gonna start that now. One of the books I read for the Magical Readathon was Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. And this is the first book in this wrap up that I'm gonna say I wasn't here for. I don't know if it was the fact that it's been so long since I read the first book that I kind of forgot and kind of stopped caring. I also don't know if it was just that I wasn't in the mood for it and so reading it became a chore, I don't know. Reading this book felt tedious and I didn't really enjoy this. Let's talk about horror, shall we? Let's talk about Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. I read this as well, I think, for the Magical Readathon. This is following a group of authors who get propositioned by this, I guess, content creator, podcast dude to do like an interview in this haunted house. Reluctantly, they all agree. They show up, they do the thing, but then after they leave the house, all of their lives just get completely fucked up. This is like a haunted house story and I really, really enjoyed it. However, I'm not gonna say that I loved it because I didn't. The ending to me kind of dragged a little bit and Scott Thomas is really kind of fat phobic in this book. Not only that, but like he doesn't like like women. <laughs> One of the authors is like, a, is like a female and she's like the kind of bitch who writes horror, but that's like kind of sexual in, in nature. She's like a badass bitch. She doesn't give a single fuck. One scene in the book where she tells like a producer dude to like go suck his own dick and it makes me so happy. But then other parts of the book, Scott Thomas will like sexualize her over and over and over again. He's like, she walked into the room, you could see her nipples through her shirt, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, why aren't you doing that for the dudes though? Like, why aren't the dudes being described? Like literally every single time that she comes into a scene, he's describing her body but he's not describing anyone else. Unless that person is fat, then he's describing the fucking fat people as well. There's one of the authors who's this like fat dude. He, every single fucking time that he would mention this fucking fat guy, he would talk about his body as if it was like grotesque, as if it was a fucking monster in the house itself, as if the fat person was the fucking ghost the whole time. And it really fucking stopped me from really enjoying this book because it literally kept taking me out of the book when he would sexualize or f be fat fucking phobic towards these characters. After finishing Kill Creek, I did read The Turtle Boy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This follows a young boy, I believe in the 80s. Him and his friend go to the dock, go to this like river, and they meet this boy who looks weird. He looks fucked up. The boy has like gashes on his skin. He looks sallow. He doesn't look healthy. So him and his friend get scared. And then a bunch of crazy shit start happening in their town after they meet what they call the turtle boy. I was underwhelmed by this short story. Novela. Novela? I didn't love it. I just, I just kept thinking like nothing was really sticking out to me as original or scary. I just thought that it was like okay I didn't think Keelan did anything special in this in, in this particular story still Keelan Patrick Burke Stan next I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix this is about a girl who works at this store that's very very similar to Ikea she's uninspired she doesn't know what to do with her life she doesn't really give a fuck her life is stagnant. One night her boss asks her to stay overnight to help him sort of watch out for the people who have been breaking in recently at the store. Shit goes bananas. Shit gets crazy. I really really liked this. I thought that the concept was really fun, really cool. I loved the ending. The ending at first scared me because I thought it was gonna be lackluster, but then it just came straight fucking through with it. That's the thing about Grady Hendrix though. What I really wished from this book was that he take those moments of imagery 
and just expand on them even more. I wish that the book had ramped itself up just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit more. I kind of wanted more in the, in the horror aspect of it. I really, really liked this. I would recommend that you pick it up. I'm sure you already have, because I think I'm the last fucking person who hasn't read this. After Horror Store, I picked up The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. This is less of a horror novel and more of a coming of age novel. I was expecting this to be a horror novel. It's not. But this follows a young boy who's basically growing up with being a misfit, with being kind of a weirdo, liking things that most kids aren't really into like horror. He finds comfort in his uncle who really delves into the world of a cult, who really delves in the world of the paranormal and the supernatural. And him and his uncle and a few other kids in his neighborhood start the Saturday Night Ghost Club. And it's basically just like the story of him during one summer. During the process of reading this, I really felt like Craig Davidson had put himself into the novel, but not in a cringy way, but in like a way of sort of this novel being a love letter to all the kids out there who like feel weird. It's kind of funny. It's sad. <laughs> now onto books that were more fucked up than I thought they would be. We have Horn Hornfill? <laughs> We have Thornhill by Pam Smee. This is about a young girl who moves into this new like apartment building or house with her dad. It's going between her and finding these dolls going I think 30 or 40 years in the past to the diary of a young girl who lives in this orphanage. As I've said many times before the book half through images and half through text. I really enjoyed it. It's more fucked up than you would think it would be. The ending especially really fucked me up. I, <laughs> I was kind of shocked with how far and how dark Pam Smee went with this. Yikes. Next we have Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. This is telling the story of the Bronte sisters and their one brother and the world they created called Glass Town. There's not a lot to say. I don't know what it is about this one that I just didn't connect with it as much as I wanted to. I still liked it. The reading experience is still good, but there was something a bit more grainy, something a bit more harsh, and something a little more pulled back. I'm not gonna linger too much on this. I did enjoy it, just not as much as I wanted to. Let's talk about one of my five star books of the month and that is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This is a literary fiction novel about this woman. She is down on her luck, she's all fucked up, but she's kept correspondence like letters between her and her old friend from college and this friend is fucking rich. She has money coming out of her wazoo. She gets a job offer from this old friend. Come up to the estate, we'll talk about some job opportunities, dude. And so she goes up there, her old rich friend is like, we want you to be a governess for my husband's long lost children. Their mother just died uh, and we'll pay you a shit ton of money. The only thing is that these children combust into flames when they get agitated or stressed or angry. I cannot even tell you how much I loved this book. I literally cried at the end. <laughs> it's like one of those books that kind of sneaks up on you. Like I started reading it and I was like, yeah, this is cool. And then all of a sudden I was lost in it. I was lost. I needed to keep reading. I needed to have these people be okay. <laughs> hilarious. This book will make you laugh out loud. It's so fucking funny. And I've never related more to a main character than I did for the main character in this book. I have to urge you to read this because it's heartfelt. It's hilarious. It's just good literature. And like you don't hear that a lot from this channel, uh, but this is good fucking literature. We are smart bitches, so let's read some literary fiction. I think that this is literary fiction. Do I know what literary fiction means? Real quick, let's talk about Regression Volume 3. I finished this as well for the Magical Readathon, and...
I literally couldn't help myself. Basically, as soon as I got this book, I had to read it. This is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is about a group of Southern women who have a book club. They're your everyday average housewives. One day, this dude comes into town. Everyone's like, what the hell? Gentleman wants to join the book club, but Patricia is sketched out by this guy. Like at first, she's like, ooh, this guy's cool, this guy's great. But eventually she's like, something fucking weird's happening. What other conclusion would you go to that other than he's a fucking vampire? I loved this. Let's just talk about having middle-aged housewives as your protagonists in a horror novel. It fucking works, dude. The way that Greedy Hendrix encapsulates this tiny society of women who are both trying to appease their husbands, take care of their children, make sure that their house is in order, who do all of these fucking things and then also have to be the fucking smart ones, have to be the fucking brains of the operation when it comes to killing this fucking vampire. Now, as, as far as like scary factors go, the scenes where there's like horrifying aspects or horrifying things happening are actually kind of scary. Specifically with the scene with the old woman who like attacks Patricia had me fucked up. It was disgusting to think about. Similar to Horror Store, I wish that Grady Hendrix had kind of gone just a tad bit further. Just like a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, just a little bit. I think, and then I think it would have been literally perfect. Real quick, let's talk about some trash. And that is The Roses of May by Dot Hutchinson. Bitch, absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is the sequel to The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchinson. Priya, this young girl, at first I thought she was fucking 12. I literally fucking thought that she was 12. And then about halfway through the book, I was like, oh, she's meant to be like fucking 18. She seems like a young, young girl. The other thing as well, and what I've noticed after reading this book is that all of the female characters are carbon copies of each other. They're all snarky. They all have quick one fucking liners. The first book, it was cute, you know? But this book, it's like, okay, but like, what else can you do? Like, what else is there? Where's the substance? Where's the personality? There is no fucking personality. There's one other thing that's kind of weird, and I don't know if it's just me. Let me know down below if you've read this as well, if you noticed anything similar. The relationship between Edison, the FBI agent, and this girl who's a victim is way too fucking close. Like, way too close. Brimming on sexual, brimming on romantic. The end of the book especially felt really uncomfortable to read. Edison and this girl Priya, who is like 17 or 18 years old, but just feels like she's 12, they start hugging each other and holding each other. And Edison keeps kissing her forehead and the top of her head. And I don't know about you, but usually FBI agents don't do that, I feel. I feel like most FBI agents don't cross that fucking line. But maybe that's just me. On Audible, they have Tales of Beetle the Bard for free for like literally anyone, I'm assuming, with like an account. And so I got it from Audible and I listened to it. It had a whole bunch of people who were in the Harry Potter like movies and I think who were in the Fantastic Beasts movies read the audiobook and it was a lot of fun. It's one of the things that I've read this month. I'm not gonna go too much into it because it's it's fucking Harry Potter. It's Tales of Beetle the Bard. You know about it already. Next up we have The Silent Patient by Alex McAllidides. This is an adult thriller novel following a psychologist who is working with this woman who shot her husband in the fucking face five fucking times. The only thing as well is that this woman, after she committed this murder, refuses to speak. I really, 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 really liked this. The entire book, I was just literally left wondering. I just love how interactive this book felt. I felt like I was there solving the mystery or whatever. 
I really, really enjoyed it. I think if you like thrillers, this is a fucking good one, dude. Let's talk about another thriller slash mystery novel, and that is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This follows a group of people. They're all old friends from like college and high school and shit. They go every year on New Year's and New Year's Eve to this some kind of thing. They take turns planning it. This year they're going to this hunting estate to sort of party and like reconnect or whatever. Until, and unfortunately, someone has been murdered within this group and someone within the group murdered them. This is so much fun, like, honestly. I love the way that she characterized all of these people. That she didn't focus too much on just one of them, but she also didn't focus on all of them because there is like fucking eight of them or something. She focused on like the few in the group. She honed in where she needed to hone in and backed away when she needed to back away. Really, really fucking like this. I thought it was so much fun and I've already pre-ordered her next book, so. Next up, I read Dear Laura by Gemma Amor. Amor? Amor? This is an adult thriller horror novella about a young girl whose best friend is kidnapped like right in front of her eyes. He's never seen again. As a child and into her adult years, she starts receiving letters from the man who kidnapped her best friend um, and they sort of start this weird correspondence. On one hand, it was a compelling piece of work. The writing was beautiful. I really enjoyed reading about the experience of this character and like how horrifying it would be to like receive these kinds of letters from this deranged fucking murderer. But also something about it just like didn't click for me. And maybe it was just the fact that I was expecting something more gruesome, something harder, something even more like horrifying than what the book actually is. I did like this. I'm not saying it's a bad novella or anything. I did like it. It's just that it wasn't scary enough for me and I didn't feel connected enough to the main character. Next up we have the only DNF of the month and that was The Majesties by Lisa So. I really wanted to love this <laughs> because look at that cover but this was boring as fuck. <laughs> I got about 40% of the way through and then said fuck it uh, and gave up because the book itself felt meandering and boring and like nothing happened. Next we have The Bird Eater by Anya Allborn. This is about a man who as a child loses his mother and has to live with his aunt and his aunt becomes his main like caregiver, main guardian and they're like this. They are close. His aunt mysteriously dies and he leaves the town from where he was living with his aunt. Like 20 years later, he's coming back to the town, renovate the house that him and his aunt lived in. Except there's some weird shit happening with like birds and the carcasses of birds. I really liked it in some parts, but then other parts of it, I just felt like were like weak as fuck. I wish Anya Allborn had really worked on the ending as well. The ending of this book is so lackluster. <laughs> Parts of this book I really, really fucked with. Parts of this book I was all there for. I loved them. And then other parts of this book, I just like, I just fucking hate it. Like the backstory of the, these ghosts in this house were so weak sauce and so like last minute seeming. It seemed like at the last minute, Anya Allborn's editor was like, oh yeah, should we do this? And she was like, yeah, I guess so. And so then she just quickly spent 20 minutes writing this scene and then they jammed it in. Like it seems so like an afterthought. Next, <laughs> we have the remaking by Clay McCloyd Chapman. This tells the story of a woman who's kind of like the town weirdo. She's kind of like a misfit. And she mysteriously gives birth to this child and her and this child go and live off in the woods. While the townspeople hate this woman and the child, they also go to them for remedies and like, you know, witchcrafty stuff. And then one day, for reasons I won't spoil, a few men from the town are just so angered by the audacity of this woman and this child that they burn them, then bury their desecrated, ashy bodies. And then from there, we go forward to the 70s or 80s where this like 
shitty horror movies being made. From there, we go forward again to the remake of that shitty 70s movie in the 90s. From there, we go forward again to, I think, 2007, where there's like this dude who's doing a podcast. And let me just say that I loved the beginning of this book. The first half of this book is strong, like strong. And then the second half of the book, Mr. Chapman gave up. There are many scenes in this book that go places but don't actually go anywhere like there's just so many loose ends and i don't know how to feel about it there's like inclusions of scenes that make no sense like time travel type of shit that makes no sense and like shouldn't be part of the plot and it's never explained anyway it's mediocre but I loved the beginning of it. Next up, we have Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This is an adult thriller novel following this woman who moves in with her brother, with her boyfriend. She's trying to figure her shit out. And so she moves into this like, into this really fancy complex with her brother, who's like a surgeon. And we know at the beginning of the novel that someone has been murdered who lived on this neighborhood. This book was mediocre at best. Like, if you're looking for a mediocre, non-committal thriller book, this is fine. I had no real emotions during reading this. I had no real qualms with it. It was fine. It did the job. I don't know. The plot twists weren't that twisty. The characters weren't that interesting. Let's talk about The Test by Sylvian Nouvel? Nouvel? This is a tiny short story novella about the test of citizenship in the UK. Can't say that much about it, but all I can say is that I think you should read it and that it literally punched me in the gut. I felt so emotional while listening to it. It fucked me up read it. The last book that I read in the month was The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. This is a murder mystery book about Anthony Horowitz. So Anthony Horowitz included himself in this novel, which usually I would say is like the cringiest thing you could ever fucking do. But for some reason, it kind of works. Either way, <laughs> I really liked this. This is about a woman. She goes into a funeral parlor one day. She uh, arranges for her funeral. She tells them like, this is the casket I want. This is the fucking song. These are the fucking photos. And then six hours later, she's dead. She's murdered. This is really fun. <laughs> I'm slowly learning that I'm a fucking idiot when it comes to understanding or guessing these kind of like plot twisty, like who's the fucking murderer type shit. But I also really love it. I also kind of love not really knowing where the story is gonna go. I really like this and I'm really excited to read the second book. Last book of my wrap up. I'm so sorry that this is so fucking long, but I read The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is a horror novel about a young girl named Eleanor. She's in her 30s and she's propositioned by this doctor to go to this place called Hill House to stay. And this doctor wants to understand whether pa the paranormal, whether ghosts exists. He wants to add science to the mix. He wants to scientifically prove that the paranormal exists. Eleanor goes to this house and then shit just goes bananas. I, I love this book. This is a reread for me. I read it a while ago and I loved it then and I love it now. And it's so weird because I had a completely different experience reading it. Reading it then felt, felt scarier. And reading it now, I felt, I felt like it was still scary, but it wasn't as scary. This is quintessential horror for you. This is classic horror. This is the best haunted house story there is. I'm telling you, if you like haunted houses, if you like ghosts, you need to read this because it's, it's quintessential. Like, this has been a journey. This has been crazy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I tried to do it as quickly as I possibly could. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit and scary shit and thrilling shit and sometimes literary shit. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you've, you've read any of these books, what you fucking thought of them. We can talk about it. I hope you have a wonderful day. 
I will see you in my next one. Bye!